Okay, so I've decided that the float level is wrong, the, uh, the, the fuel level and the carbs. And so what I'm going to do is take these carbs off and reset the float level. I have to say, getting at these bolts when the tank is on sucks. There you have it, one carburetor. And here you can see the floats. Let's keep in mind that the carburetor is upside down right now. So what happens is that as the fuel level rises, pushing the floats upwards, it contacts this little piece I'm not even going to be able to point out because it's so tiny. Anyway, if you can see that tang in the center there, that presses on a valve, and it's called the float needle. So that is a float needle right there. As it presses up, it stops flow from the fuel line from coming down out into the float bowl. So as the fuel level rises, it cuts off the gasoline. The float level is right when the float tang just touches that and before it moves the spring thing at all, before it moves the, the plunger. So it has to just touch, just like that. That's the right level. That is too far. Okay, so I've set my dial caliper here to about 19 and a half and tighten the set screw. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pokey end of it here. When I see the float come up and touch this, the body of the, of the thing, then that's the level. And I need to bend the tang in here um, so that it just touches the float needle at that point when 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 this has been set when it's sitting at that right level if I can get the bike running tonight I can actually go for a ride and check and see if my modifications make any sense there's the body of the carburetor without the gasket okay that tank has got to move I've set the level and I'm not sure that I can show you anything on the video that makes any sense but it's much lower it's touching about there now so this will make a huge difference. Whether it's too much of a difference, that we'll find out. So, after I made those uh, changes to the float level yesterday, I took the bike out and I rode it up and down my street, which is pretty flat, and uh, noticed that, in fact, it was running really poorly. So I turned around and came back and it was running really well. It pulled really hard. It's like, well, that's kind of weird. So I turned around again thinking, oh, I must have, you know, it must have just been too cold or something. So I turned around again. I headed back up the street and it ran really poorly. It's like, what's up with that? So I turned around again, but it ran really well again. And I, I mean, seriously, it ran well going one direction and poorly going the other direction. No idea why. So. That's my next thing, is to take the carbs apart and just clean them. So here's a carburetor before disassembly, or before cleaning anyway. The uh, float bowl is full of gunk and garbage and it's kind of gross in there. I'll clean that out. Then I'll take all these parts out in here and clean out the inside there and poke my wire through the vents, although they look pretty clean and make sure that air flows through everything and get it all as clean as I can. It'll be beautiful.
these vents, these little teeny tiny holes right in here, are vents that let air into the float bowl. Yeah. So you take your little minuscule strand of copper wire and you just poke it down in there. And all you're trying to do is keep it, just make sure that that little hole is clear. You can, this is brake cleaner, but it's about the same thing as carb cleaner. You spray a little carb cleaner down in there and it should come out right here. There are some places that are not as clean as I would like them to be, but all of the important passages and everything are all set up and cleaned out. And I've reset the float levels to 21 millimeters because I think that 19 and a half is too low. The book recommends 21, and so I'm going to try that first. There's the completed, cleaned up, shiny new carburetor, as clean as I can get it. Okay, so I've got the carburetors all cleaned out. Killer. And the right hand carburetor, the the uh, uh, idle jet was completely blocked, so that would explain why it wasn't idling. I mean, it was idling actually pretty well. I'm surprised at how well the bike was idling, but the right carburetor, when I would adjust the idle speed, didn't seem to make any difference. So that's probably and why. Yeah, we'll see. Unfortunately, the right carburetor also has a leaky float. I found a pinhole in the float. I soldered it up, but um, I also managed to dent it while doing that, while trying to squeeze the gas out of it. Um, so that float may be toast. I may have to get a new float for that carburetor. Anyway, let's see if it starts. And of course check for leaks. it running on one cylinder. Still doesn't work. It goes delightfully for the first, I don't know, few hundred feet goes up through third and fourth gear, great full power, and then uh, it just sort of stops, like it runs out of fuel, going up the very faint uphill. Um, it was running so poorly that at full throttle, I'm seeing there full throttle and it's slowing down. I don't really know, I don't really know, maybe I need new floats on both sides. Whatever it is, it's frustrating. <laughs> 